back to my channel. I'm Athena. This is my channel, Stitching Goddess Designs, and this is a channel about channel about cross stitch and Harry Potter. <laughs> um, welcome back. <laughs> it's been a rough couple of weeks. Um, I came down with the uh, illness that that the oldest kid had brought into the house, then shared with all the various people, and it eventually made its way to me. Even though I was telling them all to like mask and wash their hands and I was staying away from them as much as possible. Um, I have a, like an open concept. Like I can see the kitchen right up there. Living rooms right up there. It's like a split level kind of a thing. So I mean, I'm not fully protected being down here. So, um, but whatever. I caught the illness. Um, and I think I was like fine on Monday. Got sick on Tuesday, and by Wednesday I was like, I'm not okay. I'm not okay. Um, urgent care. Um, it had settled into my chest as pneumonia. And I had had pneumonia before. I don't know if the autoimmune or having had the pneumonia, like, makes me more susceptible to getting it every time I get sick now. Like, I don't know if that's a thing. Um, I still had my inhaler, but they gave me uh, steroids and a, like, a five-day antibiotic. Um, so, I mean, I was done with all the meds by, like, Sunday, feeling better by Monday, and then, um, my first, and this was, like, this Monday, and then my first, um, infusion injection for MS, um, was yesterday, on Tuesday, and the nurses said, like, as long as I'm on the upward hill, like, the better side of like being ill like as long as I'm not still declining and I'm on the upward slope I can go ahead and get the infusion so um and if anything it probably helped more because part the beginning part of the infusion was a dose of steroids and then the infusion of Tysabri is what I am taking for my medication and then um that's like an hour and then they observe you for an hour afterwards take your vitals check your vitals check how you're feeling all the things before they let you leave so i was there for like two and a half hours um right before like this last weekend before getting um my first injection i got a package in the mail from tice Aubrey. um they've kind of been like a little bit too much bugging um it's you know, the company that makes Tice Aubrey has been just, like, calling me, emailing me, mailing me. Like, I'm like, okay, back off. <laughs> so I asked the nurses when I was there on Tuesday, I'm like, is this normal for them to be blowing me up? And she was like, we have asked them so many times to leave you guys alone. They don't listen. She's like, honestly, just ignore their phone calls. Because they're just trying to, I mean, I get what they're doing. They're trying to check in on the, on the people receiving their medication making sure there's no adverse effects and if there are adverse effects that they are being reported correctly. So whatever, I get what they're doing, but also it's like, whoa, like seriously, multiple calls a day, multiple emails a day. Like it's like slow down, but this nice little packet, I mean, they gave me all the information on the medication, side effects, all the things. And then in here is like a little journal so that you can like, um, healthcare team journal so that you can like keep track of like what questions you have and there's like a whole bunch of pages just like this take notes for your visits all the things so that's kind of a cool little thing to have I'm trying to figure out what's back here I'm just feeling something oh it's probably drug facts um, and then they sent me this nice little blanket it says there's a fighter under here um, which, I mean, that's, a, that's good, but I don't get cold ever, so I don't know how much it's going to use, but, um, and then, oh, I scratched it. I got a, um, fuel for the fight, a water bottle. That's nice. And then this is probably the best thing they sent me. It is a cold pack and a heat pack. You can, um, there is instructions for like putting it in the microwave, I think. Yeah, they can put it in the microwave, you can put it in the freezer. Um, but it's become more of like a fidget for me, all these little 
like they're, I mean, one of those like little Orbeez kinds of a, I'm like just playing with the little gel packs in there. It's so much fun. But, um, yeah. Warm up, cool off, fight on. I kind of like this. Um, it's not really, I mean, I guess it's big enough for maybe my neck, cool off my neck a little bit, but. Um, sorry, my phone is like going off like crazy. Um. Uh, okay, so let's talk stitching. So I was distracted by my phone. Um, I, since I last saw you, it's now April. Happy April, everybody. Um, and finished out March, finished out Battle of the Whips. Um, I was able to like get some stitching in, not very much, honestly, but I did get all the whips touched, all the things done, even though even through the illness and the coughing and the hacking and all the things. Um, and the injection, infusion, whatever you call it, yesterday was, um, I just felt like my body felt heavy. Um, and I don't know, like, another way to explain it. And it's probably like fatigue type thing where my body was tired, but I wasn't sleepy. And, um... My legs felt heavy. I kind of felt like spaghetti legs walking, getting up and trying to walk around. Um, I was definitely like locking my legs and holding on to things as I was walking around because my legs were like super shaky. Um, I know I got a dose of steroids and I did tell them that like I have every adverse reaction possible to steroids. So she switched me to a different steroid um, that's gentler and like the body absorbs it slower, processes it slower, all the things. Which I think was good um, because I didn't get the racing heart. I didn't get the heart palpitation. I didn't get the shortness of breath. Um, after I had already been home for a while, I did get like a round of like tremors. Um, but it wasn't very long and it wasn't horrible. Um, and then, sorry, I just backed up back into more of these health stories for you. Um, I did not sleep at all last night. At all. Um... I think that I stayed up down here until maybe one, two-ish, went to bed, and then um, laid in bed and watched Harry Potter twice. I usually put Harry Potter on and I go to sleep. It went through the whole movie, put it on again, went through the whole movie again, and midway through that movie, it's it was 5.30 a.m. and it was time to wake up my youngest to go to school. At 6, he, he gets up at 5.30 and starts getting ready. At 6.15, I get up, I make him some breakfast and some lunch, and then by 6.30, he's out the door. So 6.30, he's out the door, and um, I had given myself a snack, um, took some ibuprofen because this morning my legs were cramping, both my calves were, like, cramping really bad, and my back was hurting a lot. I don't know if it was just from me, like, laying in bed all night or what. But, um, I took some ibuprofen, um, drank some water, ate a snack, like, whatever, and then I turned off Harry Potter, because that wasn't working, um, put on Pam and Steph, um, because usually I feel like Pam and Steph talk a lot, and I don't have to open my eyes to look at what they're talking about, they're kind of just talk and I'm good I can close my eyes and I can listen and I can just doze off and I eventually did but it wasn't until like after eight o'clock and then up again at 11 so yeah I only got a little bit of sleep um and I know I'm sure that was the steroids that had me to to like it, it was not I was not able to sleep so hopefully I can knock out tonight okay now I'm done. Seriously, let's talk stitching. Um, so like I said, Battle of the Whips for March was complete. But before that, I think before I finished that, no, I know before I finished that, um, I finished the March um, whip from Raise the Roof. So I finished this one. 
and um, now I have not yet started April. I haven't even collected like the fabric and flosses yet, but um, I'm because I'm behind in that aspect. Um, but whatever. Um, I finished March. And as soon as I finish April, then I can mail these two charts back to Donna. Um, I, I have her on my Instagram, but I haven't reached out yet. And I don't think I saved her address. So hopefully I can get in contact with Donna. I don't know if you still watch me. Um, and get these back to you. Because these are on loan to me because these are out of print. And so she very nicely loaned me these patterns so that I can complete my series and um, get them stitched. So I started this, I was, I think, I mean, I was at market when I started this. I was traveling from market, I'm pretty sure, on the plane. And I do a center start. So I don't know what I did to not center start this correctly, but y'all. And I had to squish. I got to these hats done and then I'm like, I don't think that's enough room. Um, there was a lot, there's supposed to be like a lot more space in between the hat and the words. There was a lot more up there. So I squished the words down and I still only have that much. That'll be barely enough to wrap around to do like a flat finish. But my words are going to go right up to the edge. So I don't know. I may do some sort of a modified because when I do my finishing, it is Eileen's tacky glue all over the place. So I may just put this on a board and glue this down to the board and then put like a ribbon up here to like trim it and make it look so it has so it has a border. Cause the rest of them are going the rest of them are going to have borders. Like I did the rest of them appropriately. Um but it's okay. And then so it says that March brings Breezes loud and shrill to stir the dancing daffodil. There are daffodil buttons that go right here from Japco, which I have not collected all the Japco buttons yet. So I need to start like placing orders on these so that I can get them added to the whips. But I feel like that's probably going to be uh, when the series is finished or close to being finished. I'll go to like one, two, three and just grab all the Japco buttons. Because it's going to be part of my FFOing, adding the beads on. Um, buttons, whatever you want to call them. Um, but yeah, there you go. Finished. So I have, I have four of them finished. I need to get the May one from wherever I have it. I probably have it stashed over there in my box of finishes. But I have January, February, March, and then I also had May finished um, from a couple of years ago for Mania. I did. I started all of these monthly series that I have and I started all the May ones and so a bunch of May ones got stitched and finished and then the series didn't I didn't continue so okay then moving on to Battle of the Whips no this was not a Battle of the Whips I lied um this is um the 25th um, Christmas stitching on the 25th so every 25th of the month I pull out Twas the Night Ornaments and I believe yeah I stitched the um, a miniature sleigh and eight tiny reindeer one and this is by JBW Designs and let me find it for you yes and there they are the cute little reindeers and then the little stars are sewn on as like charms. Um, it was ridiculous stitching these leads that go back up to the, the reins that go back up to the sleigh because that's very much a random thing and you could just like make it go up to the sleigh and it would be fine. No, my happy butt was following the pattern like explicitly like looking at the pattern, like, making sure I was going into the right spots to get him up there. It was ridiculous. I realized I was being ridiculous while I was doing it, but I didn't stop either. So, um, these are just stitched on an 18 count white Ada and I have, so they, they have three in a, so I have one, two, three, four, five done. 
And the very first one I did, um, I'm trying to find it, I did on 16 count. Um, and then I st started stitching the rest on 18 count, not realizing what I was doing. So I have these 18 counts, and then I have this 16 count, which is considerably larger. So I don't know if I'm going to restitch this, pull the buttons off, make it smaller, or if I'm just going to like, maybe I'll do the first and the last one bigger. I don't know what I'll do. These will be finished as like little ornaments. They'll be hanging on the tree. I don't think you'll super notice that one is bigger than the rest, but whatever. I have this all in my um, bag by That's So Kelly Co. And she has this whole thing where she's like doing a bag. Her bags are super cute. She has these tags that you can write um, erasable. You can write permanent marker on there, but then you just need an alcohol wipe and you, it'll wipe off. And then also is her little... Um, I have floss all over this thing, but I was just going to show you as this cute little thread drop thing and a needle minder in here and then a place to put your like orts as you're stitching. And the back of this is also that wipe off. I just need an alcohol wipe and I can wipe off these numbers of what these are. So I super love this whole little setup that I have going on for this. I have all my twas the night in here. Okay, then, now it's Battle of the Whips, for sure this time. Um, I have Grimm's Fairy Tales. Grimm's Fairy Tales, let me pull up my, 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 my bracket, which I never did finish. No, it was the Holiday Train. So Grimm's Fairy Tales made it to round two. But in the finals was the Halloween calendar and the holiday train. The Halloween calendar by Tiny Modernist, Hol holiday train or holiday express by Forbidden Fiber. Um, and Leanne is so funny from Forbidden. She was voting and at one point she voted, I think it was against the bees. It was up against superior bees. It was in the first round. And she saw the superior bees freaked out and clicked superior bees and then realized the other option was her pattern. And so she sent me a message and she's like, oh, I need to change my vote for my pattern. <laughs> and it did win anyways. But um, the overall winner was um, Halloween Calendar by Tiny Modernist. So I need to like fill that in down here. And I the goal was to get 500 stitches in on the winner. In March, but the illness put me behind so much that I said those 500 stitches will still happen, but they'll just happen in April now. So that's okay. Um, but anyways, here's Grimm's Fairy Tales. It made it in through the second round before it was booted out. And where was I stitching? Oh, right here. I stitched a pawn, an LMN, and this like little borders um, underneath. So... That's where I was stitching. This is an 18 count Ada that I dyed myself in like this uh, really light springy green kind of a color. It was the kind of color that they had called for for this pattern. This is Clouds Factory and this was a sow from like many years ago but you can just buy the whole thing now. Um, it's called Grimm's Fairy Tales. And I love it because it was a sow, so they were sending out like monthly releases of patterns. And each time you got a pattern, you got the fairy tale. You got the Grimm's fairy tale with it. Like, printed off. and it, like I mean, I was printing them, but it's in the PDF. Um, so that was really cool. There's some fairy tales that are included on there that I did not know. Um, so that was cool, too. And I have the Grimm's fairy tales book here somewhere. I look around like I'm going to be able to see it in this hot mess of a of a room. No, this room is still not done yet, y'all. I sit here in this stitching spot. I look at my room and I'm just like, I want it to be done. But I seriously get up and I can work on it for like 15-20 minutes. It's labor intensive. 
you know, it's a lot of like bending over, picking up, placing, sitting on the floor, standing up. I mean, it's a lot of like movement activity and I'm talking 20 minutes and I'm already like dripping sweat, can't breathe, have to sit down and like, okay, done. And I've like worn myself out for hours. Um, the fatigue I think has been the biggest hurdle that I have been fighting this entire time. Doing, getting up and doing small things takes so much energy. And then I have to sit down and like let my body relax. And I know I need to do that, but I feel lazy doing that. It's been, it's, it's definitely hard getting used to the fatigue. And so I'm hoping that the Tai Sabri is going to give me back some of my energy and my um, endurance to like get things done for more than like 15, 20 minutes at a time. But I digress. The next one I worked on was, no, this is not Battle of the Whips. This was Whip Go. This was a Whip Go call. Um, so this was my second Whip Go of March. Sorry, these things are all just thrown on the shelf over here and there's just, I'm just grabbing them off the shelf. Um, I cannot for the life of me remember what the first Whip Go was of March. Hold please, I'll tell you. Um... Okay, in the back of my um, BNS planner, on the grid paper, I did my whip go board. Um, and then I just write the numbers in as they're called, and I give little smiley faces as they're completed. My goal is 500 stitches on the called for the called whip in the month it's called. If I don't get those 500 stitches in in the month it's called, I don't get to mark that space off, and I don't get a blackout. I got a blackout last year. I'm super excited about that. So... And 500 is super attainable. It's an easy goal. So I'm hopeful that I can get a blackout again this year. So far, so good. Um, March was 2 and 22. So it was the Stephen King house and this Halloween sampler. So Halloween sampler by Cottage Garden Samplings. And I'm going to leave that open because I'll let you know what the March calls are in plans. This is an 18 count Ada, but I'm pretty sure I didn't dye this myself. I don't know what this is, but it's Surge, so I'm I'm 100% I didn't dye this myself. I don't know where I got this fabric from, but this is where I'm at. And I feel like this could possibly be added to uh, my list of like fo focus finishes of 2022 um, with that 500 stitches that I put in. We're, I'm down to voodoo here, right here. And yeah, I got to go back in and throw motifs in because I've been like skipping motifs. I've just been stitching the words. So did I get the moon in? No, there's a moon that goes up here. Sorry, it's hard to like hold you, hold this and show you. I got the bo boon, I got the bone, the ghost, the broom. That's why I think I was trying to say broom and bone at the same time. Over here, there's a crow. There's a star that goes right here. And then I'm, there's candy corn, a cat, a pumpkin, a witch's leg and boot, a hat, and a cauldron, like, all along the bottom, plus all the words that need to go in. So, but the words really do go fast. So I'm down to voodoo over here. I got some stitching to do up on over here, but, I mean, it's April. I feel like this could be a focus finish at some point this year make this one of my focus pieces during a month and um, be able to get that done. So, and then what do we have? What's in here? What are you? Stitching Sisters um, by Mama Witch X Stitch. Let me show you the pattern. This is a PDF I downloaded from her, uh, I don't know if this, I don't know if she has an Etsy or a website. I feel like she has a website now. Um, but I love this pattern. This is the first, I have a bunch of her patterns, but this is the first one I've actually started. Um, this was an October start for me when I was 
shouting out all my designers. So I'm like doing a page. This is a page like right up in here. So um, this is a Battle of the Whips. This was called for in the Battle of the Whips. Um, I got all this stitching in up here. And this is definitely not dyed by me, but I don't know what it looks. No, it's not. It's lighter. I feel like it's a Fortnite, maybe. Usually when I start my patterns and I post the new start on Instagram, that's where I've been posting or trying to remember to post like all of the details of what I have so that I can go back and look at that starting on my Instagram and remember all the products that I've used. Um, okay, I'm going to show you the holiday train first and then I'll show you the um, Halloween calendar because that's what one okay kids are home and they can't wait for food so they'll waste away if they don't get food immediately anyways um holiday express holiday train um i don't know where i was or where i'm gonna cut that off um i didn't want you guys hearing the microwave so anyways um this is by forbidden fiber leanne did it does an advent box in the chris in the in the christmas where she gives you part of the pattern and the color you're working on and all the things. And I was doing, I was going gung ho really good. And then I dropped off. But, um, so this is where I got to on this pattern. This is the fabric called for. She provided the fabric, the floss, all the things as part of the advent, the needle binder. Um, you can see this L in real life, but it doesn't show up on camera like at all. Um, it's a variegated floss and in hindsight I should have maybe just instead of doing like an X by X and leaving the variegation in there I should have maybe like twisted it folded it in half did a loop start like all the things so that you saw the the silver with the gray if that you know and it kind of like gave it a speckled look as you were stitching but I my my default when I'm working with variegated floss is to go X by X and keep the colors with the colors. That's how I'm doing the border. The border is all one floss. Um, but yeah, I should have done it differently. There you can see it there. I should have done it differently, but whatever. The L and the I are just hard to see on camera. They do show up in person just fine. But um, at least I'm, I'm happy with how they show up and that's all that matters because I'm the one looking at it, so. But that's where I'm at and I don't know when that's gonna come back out again probably not till December again I don't even or when I'm ready for Christmas stitching I don't know um and it's in this super cute bag she gave us the bag and a little train on the scissor fob cute little setup in the whole advent thing okay and the winner was Tiny Modernist's Halloween calendar, and I'm pretty sure y'all were voting on this because this was a focus in February, and I wanted it to be finished in February, and then it didn't happen, and I had to just accept it, and that's okay, and then once March hit, I'm like, now we're going to Battle of the Whips, so I'm going to stop and focus on Battle of the Whips, but this kept winning, and I'm pretty sure y'all were like, keep stitching on it, you're almost done. So this is the Halloween calendar by Tiny Modernist and I can't remember. Oh yeah, I just completed 26. So I have 27, 28, 29, 30, 31 and I have this Happy Halloween up here to finish and I think that this is going to be my focus again this year, this month until I get a finish. Um, I mean, it's it has to get the 500 stitches for winning but then I'm going to just keep going. So during Battle of the Whips, I got in 25 and 26, I believe. That's the progress I made for Battle of the Whips. And so, yeah, I've got to finish out the rest of that week and then put in the Happy Halloween up here. Which I don't think is a whole lot because that border is like one stitch border. And then the words in the, in the middle. And I think it's going to go pretty fast up there, but... I absolutely love the colors, love how everything pops. 
I don't, this is fabric that I dyed myself, 18 count Ada. I just, I do, I really do love this. And I think that when it's finished, it's going to be finished on, like I'm, I'm going to need some sort of a metal backing to this because I think I'm going to do a like needle minder, like a Halloween needle minder and I'll move it to what day of the month it is as like a countdown kind of a thing for October. I think that'll be cute. I love the colors though. Her colors are so good. It's all DMC. Um, but it's definitely, um, um, she stitches, I mean, she, yeah, she stitches it in a gradient. So like, you've got like all these oranges so that you can pull off that orange gradient. You've got all the green so you can pull off the green gradient. There's usually three, two to three in a colorway to pull off those gradients that are in there. It's so good. I love it. I do love it and I'm excited to have it finished. This is a 2019 start for me, so that needs to be off my whip list. That's in a dot dot goose bag. Okay, and then that was through the end of um, March. Then April 1st, I work on Death by Cross Stitch. I don't know when was April 1st I mean I feel like that was in the middle of the illness yeah Saturday and Sunday Saturday and Sunday I was pretty bad I did not stitch Saturday and Sunday at all my 100 day project went in the trash um I hate that I mean I'm trying to do something and no I mean I was I was exhausted I literally laid on the couch upstairs with my husband and we just watched TV and I just napped on and off and um, we binged Yellow Jackets. If you have not watched Yellow Jackets, I highly encourage you. It's on Showtime. I feel like season one was probably recorded pre-pandemic. Then season one came out right in the pandemic. And then I think it was delayed because filming was delayed during the pandemic. So season two just came out. Like we're two episodes in. But it's really good. It Without like giving you any spoilers, I mean, if you're watching trailers, you know what I'm about ready to tell you. It's a high school soccer, a high school girls soccer team, one state, going to nationals. And I'm pretty sure they're flying from like New, Jer New Jersey to Seattle when their plane crashes. And they survive in the wilderness for 19 months. And the show goes back and forth from them surviving as teenagers to them now as adults. And so you keep flipping back and forth. And so you get like adult drama happening and teenage drama happening and what they had to go through to survive. And yeah, um, there's, I mean, there's some crazy drama, crazy stuff happening. So it's really good. Really, really good. Highly recommend. Okay, so on the first should be Death by Cross Stitch. On the second should be the April start. And then on the third, fourth, fifth, sixth is all working on that April piece. Um, I haven't started the April piece at all. <sighs> Maybe, I, I don't think I will. I don't know if I will start it today. Um, after I'm done filming this, I am going to get shirts done. Like I'm getting in that office and I'm working on shirts. I don't care if I'm sitting there working snail pace. I'm going to work on shirts. I feel horrible. Um, if you do not follow me on Instagram and you do not follow me, I don't know how, like, if you're ordering from me, you're probably following me on Instagram and or Facebook. But um, I posted yesterday, you know, apologizing for the delay yet again. The illness put me behind. Then the infusion yesterday knocked me out. I literally sat in this chair all day. Um, it, it was a, it was a lot yesterday, but, um, I need to get back at it. I've got, there's late orders and I hate sending stuff out late. So I have to get that done. Also, if you're not following me and you're not aware, but the Gilmore Girls, Spring and Stars Hollow, I went off on a little tangent here. This is Black Needle Society, Spring and Stars Hollow, Digital Retreat, a box 
comes. The box was packed last night. Should be picked up and mailing today. Um, anyways, that retreat starts on like the 26th later this month. Today, if you're in that group, there I have made shirts for that retreat. They're only available to the people in that, in that group for that retreat. Today is the cutoff day for ordering to get your shirts before the retreat starts. I will still have sales open all the way through the retreat, but you will be getting them after the retreat at this point. If you order like from tomorrow on, they will not be there in time. I can't guarantee they will be there in time, especially with me being as backed up as I am. Back to stitching. Yesterday, I was able to work on this um, after I got the infusion and I was in like the um, observation hour time frame, I was able to get this out and work on it. And then when I got home, I just continued working on it because I didn't want to put it away. So at the infusion, I got these little triangle pieces done here and then off onto this line. So that's what I stitched and I decided to go diagonal with it. And then when I started this one, I started going diagonal this way instead of like continuing my diagonal that way. So that's a new thing for me where I went diagonal that way, then that way. Then when I got home, I stitched all of this and this down here, the beginning part of this triangle down here. So that's where I'm at. And then I always, always, always get asked what the floss is. The floss is by Dying Four Cross Stitch, um, F-O-R or the number four. I think both of them will get you to where you need to be. She has a website. This colorway is Unicorn. She does do re-dyes and restocks of this pretty regularly. Um, if it's sold out, keep checking back. It should come back eventually if you're dying for this color. These are teal... It's a teal, a pinky purple, and a darker purple. That's pretty true right there, what you're seeing right there. On here, that dark purple almost looks black. It's not. It is that darker, it's a darker purple with the pink and the teal. And I absolutely love this. Love, love, love it. And it's, I mean, good because I'll be working on this for like the rest of my life. Um, okay. Now that's it. That's all the stitching that I have to show you. But don't go away. I have giveaways. I got giveaways. I got haul. I got things. I got things to show you. Um, okay. So, first of all, I got some Stacy haul. Stacy Stitches Creative Studio. Um, linked always linked down below I'm a rep for her ONS and you can use my code um I know that like new releases from market are not eligible for my code I don't know when the, they start being eligible but any anything else on her website 10% off um the wood supplies like all the things 10% off so go check out her website get 10% off do all the things um so I got, I picked up, this was a market piece, but then it, I had to like come in and order. So it came later, but this is by Mojo Stitches. All my favorite threads are red and it's got one, two, three, four, five, six. There's seven different reds in there. I don't know that I'm going to like exactly cause it's a couple of cottage garden threads, a couple of gentle arts, a couple of weeks and a classic. Um, I don't think I'm probably going to pull the exact call for I'm just going to go through my stash and find some reds. That's what I was doing on Saturday and Sunday. My memory is like trash right now, y'all. Because I wasn't stitching and I was up there upstairs with my husband and I was just sitting on the couch. I took my floss up there and I sorted all my floss, all my DMC, all my fancy, everything. All the fancies are on rings hanging on this wall right here. That's why I keep looking over there. And they're alpha. Um, well, the classic and the um, gentle arts are on the rings by alpha. The other ones are just, they're not a lot, whole lot of them, so they're not alphabetized on there yet. 
then I, I that was Saturday and I did all the DMC put all the DMC into a box and then all my weeks is in a box too because I have too many to go on a ring so then I got Sunday I took all my patterns upstairs and I sorted them by category and I my eyes watering um I does that like spontaneously a lot um yeah just sorted all my patterns by like category and got them all somewhat sorted and somewhat put away they're easier to sort through now if I'm trying to look for something and there's not two huge bags of patterns kicking around on my floor anymore which I'm really happy about um okay so the other things I got from Stacy are I'm on an auto ship for the cottage garden samplings um snowman that the snowman collector series so this is number three and he's the shepherd. My hope is that this will end up in a, in included in my monthly series type of a thing. And that I'm going to be able to like, this looks like this month, stick it in with this month. This looks like this month, stick it in with this month. They're not necessarily themed for a month though. So I'm going to wait and see all 12 before I decide what months each snowman's going to be displayed in. This is definitely a winter vibe for me because of the Cardinals, but I don't know. It might be like a January type one. Um, he's the postman. I love the Cardinals and all the red pop in there and it's cute. Love it. And then I already got invoice for number five. I think I already got invoice for that one. She also has started a um, finishing club. Is it bi-monthly or quarterly? I think it's a quarterly finishing club. Um, I can't remember how much it was either. God, I'm a bad rep. Um, but if you go to her website, I'm sure there's information. Find the finishing, I'm pretty sure it's quarterly, finishing quarterly club. Fill out the Google form to get on that. I've already received my first invoice. For that, I don't know when that's going to be shipping to me, but it's going to have like a finishing piece and then like different fabrics, trims, those kinds of a things. Kind of, she kind of put up some pictures um, of, but it's like what it will be like, but not exactly what it is. So I'm excited to, I think it's a mystery type thing. So I'm excited to see what I get when I get it. Okay, and lastly from Stacy is, um, my free pattern of the month for being a rep. I get a free pattern. You get a free pattern. So the pattern of the month for April is I would rather be stitching. And this is by Primrose Cottage. And it's bee stitching. Um, they have some amazing bee patterns if you're into bees. And that's like your decor for like summer. They have really good bee patterns. And then they carry all these like fabrics. Finishing fabrics too. Primrose Cottage does. So if you wanted to like go to their Etsy store, you can check out all the things if you haven't heard of them yet. I don't know how, They're, they've been everywhere. But um, you're gonna say, well, first of all, I'm, this isn't, this isn't, you're gonna get a pattern from Stacy mailed to you and then you're gonna get something from me mailed to you. This is going to be a bundle giveaway. I'm bundling this up and um, let me show you what you're going to get from me and then I will give you the magic word because one magic word, one person is going to get this pattern from Stacy, and this other thing from me. That was generously donated by Wanda from Pinky Promises. She makes amazing bags. Y'all, I'm not taking it out of the plastic because I'm sending it to you and I want you to like get it in this plastic. I don't want it to be ruined. So... You've got like gold flecked um, fabric on the back here and this amazing machine embroidered bee on the hive. And then the inside is gold stuffs. It comes with these floss drops. Here's her business card. And it's quilted, y'all. It's squishy. It's quilted in there. Like it's got like the whole, her bags are absolutely amazing. Now, 
currently her store is on vacation. Um, I think she's on like spring break or something like that. She, her Etsy store will be back up on 415, I believe. So later on in the month, go check out her store. Um, she has more of these. Look at that bee right there. The queen bee with the, oh, so good. Um, she has amazing bags. So she sent one for me to give away and one for me. And it was up to me to decide. But since I knew that this was my pattern from Stacy, I figured I'm totally bundling this. So the magic word is B, of course. B-E-E, -E, not just B-E. Say B and you're going to get, Stacy's going to mail you a pattern and I'm going to mail you a bag. What? Um, so super April giveaway. Um, thank you so much to Wanda and to Stacy for those giveaways. The bag that I kept for myself, <gasps> y'all, of course I saw this and I was like, yep, that one's mine. Solid black, machine embroidered. It's going to get blown out, but look at that. It's so good. And then the inside is like mm, Rockstar skeleton hand yeah. and forever and roses in there. And then the floss drops. She always includes these floss drops and they're really good. There's like what? One, two. Let's see how many is in here. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There's eight of them in here. Um, I would probably untie these to use them. And then put them on a ring. But they're nice like cardboard scrapbook. And they're all different. Love them. Love them. Love it. So again, that's Pinky Promises on Etsy. Um, all one word. And... Um, her name's Wanda, but like I said, her Etsy's on vacation until April 15th, I believe. Um, absolutely love her bags. Oh, and you can see the quilting on this. Can you see it? Yeah, you can see it. It's quilted in there. Zippers are heavy duty. Nice zippers. The sewing, it's just, I can't say enough. Love her bags. And she gave me this cute little thinking of me, hoping I'm feeling okay, like, so nice. Thank you, Wanda. Um, again, the word is B. Say the word B. Um, what else do I have to show you? I don't think I have anything else. And look, it's been an hour. Um, some of this is interrupted by kids, but I'm like looking around thinking, oh, I was going to talk April plans with y'all. So the first is death and then the second through the sixth should be the April stitch. I don't know how much that's going to actually happen. Um, it might have to just be started later in the month. The seventh is a Harry Potter stitch. The eighth, and that's my Harry one that I'll be working on then. And then the eighth is my cunning full coverage stitch. I am itching to get that out. And I don't know, that may have to come out more than once a month. Um... The full coverage is like screaming at me lately. Like I'm just like, ooh, I want to work on that. Um, here's a little tangent for you. This morning in the wee hours of whatever, not being able to sleep, I found a new floss tuber. Those missing stitches. Those missing stitches. That's what it is on Instagram and on FlossTube. She has one video up like three days ago, I think. And all full coverage. I think she's got like a modern folk embroidery mixed in. Everything else is full coverage. And she's working on those. I have those libraries. I have like almost all of those libraries. I can't remember the artist, but those Hade libraries, you know what I'm talking about. All the colors. And she's like 30-ish percent done with one of them. And it's huge and it's gorgeous. She's a librarian, so she really loves the library themed stuff. So good. Check her out. That was my little tangent in there. I think that's what has me like, ooh, because I was watching her on all those full coverages. I was like, oh, I'm going to get some progress in on my haze. Um, okay. For the month of April, 5 and 17 were called for Whipco. 5 is Universal Monsters. This is a Sal by the Witchy Stitcher. 
Um, it's kind of done similarly to the chopping mall, a little bit smaller, I think, where there's rooms and the Stephen King house, there's rooms and there's different monsters in each room. So I'll be able to get that out and get 500 in on that. And the other one is Scylla Witches. And that is by... Who is that by? Hmm. I can't remember. Is it Teresa Kogut? It might be Teresa Kogut. Dang, it totally just jumped out of my brain, y'all. Scylla Witches. I'm sure if you Google Scylla Witches cross stitch, you'll come up on it. It's a Halloween one. Plus, I'll be showing it later on in the month. That's going to get 500 stitches. Um, What else? What else is happening in April? I've got my all my stickers in on my calendar page here. I've got all the stickers in throughout the month. Um, Easter is this Sunday, y'all. It's this Sunday. First of all, it's Easter this Sunday, so... You know, happy Easter to everybody who celebrates and all the different um, holidays in and around this time period. There's a bunch of different ones, all the things. I know there's Ramadan, Passover, all the things. Um, now that my kids are older, I feel like not, nothing much is going to happen. I'm, I'm thinking I'm going to make a pork roast and some potatoes for dinner. And that's, oh, and then my husband tortures them into watching the Ten Commandments. Every Easter, it has become a groaned tradition. But I guarantee you, I guarantee you, my husband is considerably older than me, but you watch when these kids get up, get wives, get kids, how much you want to bet they're going to torture them kids into watching the Ten Commandments every Easter, just like they had to be. Um, they know the story of Moses inside out and backwards. I promise you that. We don't go to church, but they know that story. Um, what else was I going to tell you for the month? Um, yes. So today is the fifth. Yes. Today is the fifth. So I'll be working on my Harry one on the seventh, my cunning on the eighth, ninth is Easter, 10, 11, 12, 12 I go on vacation, which is why I don't have time to sleep on these shirts. I have had this vacation planned for months now. It's not something I can put off. It's a birthday trip um, for some stitchy besties, Melina, um, half of Count Toy Stitch Ones, and Janelle of um, Coffee, Wine, and Stitching Time. Sorry, my brain jumped. Um, they have both had... One of us already had a birthday and one has a birthday coming up. This is kind of like a middle ground of birthday time. So they wanted to go to Universal and I was like, heck yeah, I'm always willing to take somebody to Universal with me. So we're going to Universal for a couple of days. That's going to be amazing. Um, but we're leaving on the 12th on Wednesday, like crack it on early. So all that to say is that I, I don't know what next week I want to sit here and tell you that I'm going to film from the hotel and get a floss tube up next week, whether it's Wednesday or Thursday. I don't know that that's going to happen, 100%. It may, it may be another two-weeker. Just because I want to have fun, I want to have a vacation, I want to relax, I don't know that I want to bring all the things with me to film. Maybe I do a Tuesday before I leave. There's that possibility. We shall see. We're going to see what the shirt situation is like. We're going to see where my stress level is. I have definitely a oh, thousand percent giving myself grace. It's hard, but I'm also doing it. So I have, I'm learning not to push myself, learning not to stress myself. And if it doesn't get done, it doesn't get done. It's not the end of the world. This whole thing. Yes, the shirts is a business and that's where I make my money and all the things, but the rest of it is hobby. And so I need to know it's a hobby. I'm having fun. This isn't work. Chill. Don't bring the stress to this part of my life, right? So if it happens, it happens. If it doesn't, it doesn't. If I'm not here next week, y'all know why. Um, But yeah, there, so yeah, 
I mean, all of the called for monthly things will be worked on. 100 Owls, Chopping Mall, um, Halloween at Hawker and Hollow didn't get touched in March because of the whole being sick. I let that one go by the wayside. So I'll hopefully get it out this month. Um, Twas the night. And then later, starting on like the 26th, like I said, is the Spring and Stars Hollow digital event with the Black Needle Society. And that is the 26th through the 30th. I work that. I am on the this end of things where um, I'm probably off camera a lot in the, because I'm like adding up points. I'm taking in like this this event is um, community based and the whole thing is like you have your stitching challenges but the whole group the stitches that you are making are being tallied as a group. Like everybody's stitches are being accumulated. And by the end of the weekend, based on how many stitches was done by the end of the weekend, is how much the Black Needle Society is donating to the given cause. Also during the week, the given cause, you will have the opportunity to donate for raffle tickets. So I will be collecting those donations and assigning digital raffle tickets, which is me just putting your name on a list and then the list is randomized and a number is chosen. Um, so I'm on the back end of things doing all of that. Um, so I'll get on camera when I can and I'll stitch when I can. But I'm mostly like tallying and doing all the things as, as events are happening. So there's stitching challenges, there's stash dives, there's digital dives, all the different things. And everything gets points, prizes, all the things. Katie and Laura are super generous in everything that they do with their digital retreats and their in-person retreats. There's prizes, prizes, prizes. Like, almost by the time you're done with the retreat, you're like, whoa, that was a lot. <laughs> um, but yeah, there's they're super generous in all of the giveaway type stuff. So, and I am not 100% sure if the charity has been chosen yet. Um, I'm not 100% sure if that's been announced yet. Um, I've kind of been checked out of things, so I don't know. Um, but that's my April. And, um, the 27th, which is like day two of, or it's actually like the first full day of Gilmore Girls, is my oldest's 21st birthday. Y'all, he's gonna go to a bar. I know it. Instantaneously, he's gonna be at a bar. I'm sure he's gonna go get his ID, and then he'll be hitting up the bars. Um, I'm just, you know, okay, go have some drinks and enjoy, enjoy, but let's not make it a lifestyle choice. <laughs> That's my biggest concern. Anyways, I definitely have rambled past an hour now on the little time clocky thingy up there. Um, I am, um, yeah, I don't know. I've said, it, I've said everything. I've said it all. <laughs> um, I will. Maybe see you guys next week. Maybe not. We shall see. Um, of course, the video coming back from Universal is always a great one because they've got all the magical haul. So, okay. That's all I got. <laughs> I'm done. Midwest goodbyes. I will see you guys when I see you. Bye.